Hey everyone, thanks for coming to this talk. Um, this is a bit of a um, clickbait in real life because uh, there is no secret world of Nixon flakes, but I hope it'll be interesting enough for you to, you know, consider this. Oh, by the way, there's a QR code here. There'll be one in the next slide. So if you want to follow along, um, you know, go ahead. So yeah, this is our agenda for today. This is what we're going to discuss. Uh, basically, um, what I want to talk about is, you know, why Nix, right? Why this is important to me, why you should care about this. So I started out with Nix about two years ago. Um, it was sort of um, out of annoyance, you know, as a longtime Linux user, specifically an Ubuntu user, I was frustrated with having to, um, after, you know, reinstalling uh, the distro, having to install all my packages and stuff, right? You know regardless of whether or not I scripted up a solution, right, had, um, you know, finicky scripts and, and whatnot, right, to get my environment, everything back uh, to my liking. Uh, over time, I grew, you know, annoyed by that. Um, and it just wasn't um, good enough to, to, you know, manage. So I discovered Nix uh, when I was sort of like in a DevOps space for a bit by mistake, and I ignored it because I was like, why would I use this, right? This is a bit complicated, right? And it is, right? It's, it's intimidating. It's, you know, um, very steep, has a very steep learning curve, but it's worth checking out, right? It has a lot to offer. You know, if you're a user of uh, Homebrew as a Mac user or a Linux user, um, Brew is just basically a package manager for Unix, right? It doesn't always support, only support Mac OS. Um, you can use it on Linux as well, but you can install uh, packages, uh, you know, same way you can use like apt, which is specifically for Debian distributions or yum, et cetera. Um, Nix is like that, right? Nix started off as a package manager, but also it's an operating system, a build system, and of course, a uh, language. So yeah, software security with Nix. So there's a problem with software security. Um, and the issue is it hasn't really changed that much, in my opinion, right? We think of DevOps and we think of the problem that DevOps itself tries to solve, right? Which is mainly a cultural issue, right? In the past, uh, developers, you know, would develop and then move the final product, move the source to production, right? Um, but that's not efficient, right? You have to test your code, right? And DevOps is like, we're going to change the culture of that. We're going we're gonna to move our code through different phases, right? Before we push to production, right? We're going to test our code uh, through different, um, you know, different stages, right? Dev, then then uh, testing, then staging, right? And then production. So, in my opinion, um, the way we develop now needs to be reformed, right? There are a bunch of tools that don't care about dependencies. They especially don't care about security, um, and they don't really force the developer to think about security. So yeah, this provides more information in regards to what I was talking about, uh, in, you know, um, about the current situation of development. Um, you know, if you're a developer, think about, you know, using a package manager like NPM, right? Um, out of the box, what does it offer you? Um, to track your dependencies or, or, or to place emphasis on um, just, you know, caring about if they're up to date, right? Because um, your task, I understand, is, is just a code. And, you know, maybe it's not your job to think about, um, you know, if, if security is important because, you know, you're not tasked. But in my opinion, Nix empowers you not to only think about that, but it helps to take, you know, some of that load off, right? Some of that work away from, you know, you. So Nix, as I mentioned, is a package manager. It started off as a package manager, then it became an operating system, and of course, it's a language. So Nix OS, the operating system, combines the language and the package manager um, into one sort of like entity. Right? So all these features are, are built in together. Um, when we talk about declarative, um, what it means to be declarative, you have this configuration file that defines everything. Um, you know, what users exist on the system, the programs available, you know, what SSH keys 
uh, each user should should have, right? Public keys and whatnot. Um, you know what what uh, desktop environment you want to use GNOME. Um, you know you can you can define that declaratively. So one configuration to rule them all, and that's what I like. That's what I was looking for when I wanted to, you know, go away from bash scripts, right? And 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 just have something that you know, one file, right, that will allow me to um, back up my system and move to somewhere else, right, whether it's a different machine or, you know, locally or a server. That's, this is, you know, this solves a lot of my issues personally. I know it does for a lot of companies and other people as well. So some of the security benefits that you have for Nix include sandboxing, right, isolation, uh, when we build a package, it's in a sandbox. It can be touched. Um, when you think about, um, you know, a derivation, which is all uh, an, an X file is an X expression. It's also called a deriv derivation. Uh, derivation. Uh, it's just a set of instructions for how to build a package. Um, Nix requires you to define a lot. We'll get in that, into that later. So yeah, this is going to be an overview of Nix and Nix Flakes. I'll talk about Nix. Uh, you know, the, I guess the classic um, deriv derivation, and then why Nix Flakes. So yeah, I mentioned Nix is a package manager. Um, you can install any application you want, similar to uh, other package managers like Apt or Brew, but it also provides you with the, you know, with the ability to roll back, you know, if you think about the concept of atomicity, uh, you can roll back to a previous version if you don't like, um, you know, the changes that a new package provides. Or even in the example of NixOS, right, if you build a new configuration, you can also roll back uh, your whole system based on, you know, uh, new installed packages. I will also talk about the Nix store later, uh, because the Nix store is where all the packages are stored. And it sort of makes um, different, not necessarily different opinions, doesn't follow the, the Unix hierarchy, uh, you know, the file system structure. Everything is stored in a separate location. Yeah, so this is some of the things, you know, that I mentioned. So something to think about, right, for for Nix, if you you know build a new configuration, you're probably thinking, man, doesn't this take up a lot of space in my system, right? Because if I build a package, right, or if I upgrade to a new package and I'm no longer using it, will it just disappear? And of course, the answer is no, right? Because we care about you know atomicity. We care about um, you know keeping things available, right? So we can switch to them later on. But if you don't need them, you know Nix has a great command called Nix uh, garbage collect, and it'll just remove what you don't need freeing up space. So it's not, you know, an, an issue. So yeah, Nix flakes are, you know, is the, I guess, modern way to think about um, derivations. Um, of course, Nix itself is portable, right? I can take a derivation, I can share it with someone, but here's the issue. You have to figure out how to build it, right? What if, you know, um, What if there, there are no instructions given to me by, you know, the, the, the user, right, or the writer, right? If I get a derivation, like what flags do I need to build it with? What options do I need, right? Uh, a flag is basically another level of, of that, right? It, it sort of like fixes the problems associated with that. You don't have to do any guesswork. Everything is defined, everything is sort of like given to you, right? It, create, it increases um, portability. So here's, here's what I'll say uh, regarding you know, the current state right, of Nix itself. So there are two commands. One is Nix hyphen build, and one is just Nix build. And you're probably wondering, like, why do you need two commands to you know, build a package in Nix? Right? So Nix hyphen build is the modern way. Right? It tries to fix all, all the mistakes that Nix hyphen build um, created all the things that it doesn't address. It tries to 
address and tries to fix them. Of course, yes, you still have to use nix-build because uh, you know, default.nix files still exist, right? Um, if you look at nix packages, which is like a huge collection of uh, just you know, packages in general, you know, if, you, if you think about um, if you think about Debian or um, uh, AUR, the Arch user uh, repository, right? You have a repository of packages. Like, think about your favorite pa package. Um, let's let's say um, MC, Vim, uh, whatever you know package you use. Uh, Nix has a huge repository on GitHub. That repository is called Nix Packages, and it has a bunch of packages. I think it's like number two. I think it's number two, uh, second to the AUR. So it's pretty huge, you know, lots of contributors, uh, lots of, you know, developers, and, and you know, it's, it's really useful, and it's sort of um, a build and block of foundation um, when it comes to derivations or flakes. You can build a flake remotely. You don't have to clone it, right? It, it comes with a special command. You can, you can run a flake. You can sh show a flake. You can see what outputs it provides you, but I have to, having to actually, like, copy and paste the flake and then open a file and paste in its contents or just clone a repository, right? Um, something to mention is Nix packages. Nix packages is a monorepo, right? So if you were to clone it yourself, you know, you're going to be waiting um, a couple of minutes depending on your network connection and system in general. So unless you're looking to contribute to the repository itself, you probably don't want to do that. Um, but that's not even necessary to mention actually because um, if you have Nix installed anyway, you can just install a package. You don't have to actually clone a repository. But that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so I probably should have mentioned this in the beginning. Um, this talk is only 25 minutes. There's a lot of things I'm not going to cover. You're not going to leave out of here and be a Nix expert. right? This is just to show you, hey, this is what's possible. This is what's available to you. This is what you can do when you go home, um, when you go to work. Um, for, you, you know, for your personal projects, something to just you know, think about. I want to look at different aspects I'll show you different aspects of Nix itself. And you can choose just, you know, what to pay attention to. If you go home and, you know, uninstall Brew and just use Nix as a Brew replacement, you know, personally, I'll be disappointed, but that's your prerogative, right? You have that freedom to do it. But you'll be, you'll be sitting on a technology that's way more powerful than what you're using it for. So, yeah, this is a traditional Nix expression. Um, something I... I you know, realized when I was looking back at these slides was I actually didn't uh, link to a configuration example, configuration.nix. So configuration.nix configuration is also just a derivation, right? And these are just instructions on how to build, you know, a package. Uh, configuration.nix configuration specifically is how to build a system. You can, as I mentioned previously, define the user, define a desktop environment. Uh, if you wanted to, um, assign you know, SSH, SSH key to a user. You can do that programmatically through the Nix expression, the Nix language. You can think about all the things you can do in Unix, from invoking you know, a shell on login for a specific user, right? Think about your little uh, environment variables, right? custom environment variables, or dot files. You know, this is also one of my pet peeves, right? It's so difficult to manage all these little things, right? As, as Unix users, we love to customize stuff. We love the freedom that it provides us. But, you know, management is not very easy sometimes, and you get lazy, right? In my opinion, this is one, you know, the one tool to rule them all, because it provides us with all these benefits. You don't have to rely on any other third-party tool, because this can also be your operating system, right, and provide you with these, uh, you know, um, features. So the first link is just an example of the configuration syntax. Uh, you can also write a flake, write a flake.nix to do the same thing. There's some examples on GitHub. If you wanted to look at my GitHub, you can too. But you know there, there are many ways to do this. And the second one is just a link to this specific derivation. Um, and this one is just for, I believe, a Python package. So I'm not going to click on it just because it's a, you know, it's a presentation. Anything can go wrong. My computer can freeze or it just won't look quick enough. And the time is ticking here. But what I want to show you here is like we're just defining how to build a Python package, right? We have the name of the package, right? Well, first we have the arc set, right? Um, you know, the dependencies that we need. 
So when we say something is functional, right, we care about its inputs and its outputs, right? Nix expects, you know, first it expects in, in regards to security for you to have a hash, right? It can't do anything if you don't have a hash. And we'll get back to that later. But we see that we have the arc set, and then we have instructions for how to build this specific Python package. And we have, you know, version information. And we have, uh, you know, we're using fetch from, fetch from GitLab, so I guess you can imagine what that means, right? We're grabbing this package from GitLab. There's also many other fetchers, like fetch from GitHub. We're defining uh, the user, the owner, and uh, the package name, of course, the, the version and the hash that I mentioned, that's really, really important. And these are some uh, build phase options, like pre-configure, pre which might look familiar to, you know, Unix users among us um, when building packages. But also pay attention to that, the meta section, right? Uh, we have a homepage description and all this other stuff. And think about like what it means, right? We'll get into SBOM later, but all this stuff is really important uh, for SBOM. Yeah, and this is similar to the previous example. Uh, that one was the classic example, the derivation. This is the Nix Flake example. This is the modern way. Um, I should mention that Nix Flakes are experimental, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use them. Uh, you should totally use Nix Flakes. They're, they're really fun and they're extremely useful. As I mentioned, you can build a Nix Flake for Nix Flake remotely. You don't actually have to download a file or copy, um, you know, the, the, the Flake itself. Um, if you have Nix installed, here's a command at the bottom, for example. Uh, if you want to see what the output's for, you know, this um, AWSSH package, just do Nix Flake show, uh, GitHub, and then, you know, sysagov is the owner, and then the repo is AWSSH. Uh, we can see that this, you know, builds on Darwin, right? Built on Linux and a different architecture supported. And when I was looking back at this, I realized that I actually didn't have, um, in, the, in the Flake itself, it didn't actually define a dev shell. So I went back and added a dev shell just to make it easier as a, as a better example. But the code on the left will still build a dev shell. Oh, actually, I should explain what a dev shell is. So there's a command called next develop, right, which will put you in an environment with all the dependencies of the package so you can, you know, develop on it. So forget about installing, um, forget about installing a dependency. I, you know, just think about when you're, you know, writing code. You need uh, a dependency to build your application. Forget about installing that system wide. Right, and just having this one file that will just have it available in this isolated environment. Um, so let's think about this from a security perspective. If you were to install a library on a system, right, that relies on other packages, that library was, you know, had, had a vulnerability, right? It would just increase the attack surface, right? This library that depends on other applications. But if you have this, you don't have to necessarily worry about that because, you know, it's all in one place. Yeah, and this is the Nix file system. Basically, you know, the whole, all the outputs of your application are hashes. And this is how it verifies, you know, um, via integrity that what you built is secure, right? So every, everything that you build, everything that you build, you know, you always get the same result. All the outputs will never change, essentially is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, you look at something like Docker. Docker isn't very um, reliable, right? The output, when you do Docker build, it really depends on the environment, right? Uh, if the environment changes, um, you know, your package is not going to build accurately, right? Like, works on my system is definitely a thing that's, that Docker doesn't solve, but Nix solves, right? For Docker, you have to look at other things, right? The text, right? If the image changes, um, you know, you can't expect the same results, you know, for you to, res to get the same results. So Nix, you know, fixes that. So let's look at Salsa before we uh, dive into SBOM. So when we're talking about source integrity, 
we're talking about you know the hashing aspect of Nix, right? Nix expects a hash, right, to verify that you know the, the packages that you give it, you know, are you know not necessarily secure, but um, verifiable, right? So this is also another example of a derivation, but we're skipping all the arg sets, we're skipping everything, we're just looking at, you know, um, the Python package, right, and the name. Um, if you try to build this with a hash, it's gonna complain, it's gonna give you a hash, and then that's the hash that you um, paste in. So when we talk about build script integrity, um, we talk about, we, we wanna focus on you know, the things that are provided to us, right, as, as you know, next users and next, you know, builders. Um, so, you know, basically, if I have, you know, for example, this derivation, right, if I want to build it, right, Nix has different features like sandboxing uh, that ensures that Regardless of what happens to my system, right, the package will not be affected, right? Uh, the build, the build output, the build uh, result, and actually that's part of the integrity part, build environment integrity, uh, integrity, right? The sandboxing, right, which goes back to my Docker example, which you know Docker doesn't um, support or actually um, provide. So provenance and reproducibility, you know, I can, I can send a flake, right, to someone. Uh, someone can grab a package uh, and build on a different system, and they'll always get the same output, they always get the same resu result. Nothing, um, you know, will change, right? You can, you can build it as many times as you want, um, as long as the package um, doesn't change, right? Dependencies don't change. The build, you know, you know, is reproducible. Uh, something I want to mention too. Um, let's let's you know. So okay, so there's there's a term. Uh, so some of you are probably thinking, you know, why would I use those build systems? Are there other build systems, right? Um, you know, I guess you, you can say one of the drawbacks, right, of Nix is it will build every component of a package, right? If something changes, it's going to build the whole package, right? Even if it's just a small component, it's going to have to build the whole thing again. So that's probably, you know, the downside. Um, there are other build systems. I, I imagine someone will probably, um, you know, ask about that. Um, but we can get to that later. Yeah, so it's also a, a Nix level four, right? So we have this derivation, right? And it's gonna show us, um, you know, where it is in Nix store. And of course this connects with SBOM, right? And it's just an example of the output. So uh, if you look at the derivation, if we, you know, just choose a, a random package in our next store. It'll give us all these options, right? The environmental var variables that are provided, right? And some different options that are within the derivation themselves, uh, including the name. So basically everything that's defined, um, all the arguments in the derivation, the outputs we see here. So I wanted to focus on static and dynamic analysis. Um, there are, you know, I know this is like an important topic for some people, and there are programs that you can actually like, make use of in Nix itself. This is something that isn't done automatically or built in, but it's something that can enhance your Nix experience. So, you know, we just have different tools like Clang and Valgrind, right? You can integrate them within, you know, your Nix flakes. And now we're going to get to SBOM. Because if you remember um, when I showed you the example flake, uh, you know we have the meta section, not to mention the outputs of the next store and how it provides you with all this information. 
right? It's essentially doing what S bombs can do. So I, I figured I'd link to this blog post here, Nix as software identifier, because I think it's the perfect conclusion for this presentation because it basically sums up uh, what I've been trying to talk about, right? You know, why, why you would use this, you know. Um, of course, there are tools um, that you can use for SBOM themselves, but Nix also like, provides you with, that, with those outputs, right, with that information. Um, and below are those additional tools as well. Yeah, so this is the conclusion. Um, if you want to install Nix, go to the Nix installer. I recommend a terminal systems installer. Uh, if you want to learn Nix, go to nix.dev. If you want to try Nix, maybe replace your uh, OS, uh, go to nixos.org. Um, thanks to CyberGen for helping me prepare, CyberGenny for helping me uh, prepare for this presentation. Um, she worked with me a lot. Um, you know, this is proven clap. Proven ground. I'm a first time speaker, so um, this was, you know, good first time experience. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, any questions?